With America wanting to become a world superpower, spreading democracy and conquering lands, they stepped out of their comfort zone, expanding their reach in the world. Then came World War I, which traumatized America by bringing them back to their old ways of isolationism. Due to this immediate focus on their country as a whole, a change in American life was brought about with the newfound prosperity of the 1920s. The 1920s, or Roaring Twenties, was a flourishing time in the United States. Changes were apparent in multiple social aspects, with women, African Americans, and men, even though their biggest change would be the prohibition of alcohol, which would later be repealed. Women challenged social expectations as a flapper girl style became hugely popular. African Americans who participated in the Great Migration and went to New York celebrated their cultures and heritages through the Harlem Renaissance and their influence in the Jazz Age. However, racism, discrimination, and race riots were still occurring, especially by means of the extremely influential new forms of mass media. There were some negative aspects of the booming 1920s, but the changes in American society would influence the nation for later movements. Even though the country was shaken and depressed during this economic downfall, with the election of Roosevelt, a sense of hope was restored. His charismatic character gave the light in the dark times, and with as many ideas for the fireside chats, the three R's, and the New Deal, the country began to rebuild itself. In order to benefit the most amount of people, the president passed many acts within the first 100 days, some of which can still be seen today, and some that were even ruled unconstitutional. Some of the most influential acts included a national bank holiday, the Glass-Steagall Act, Securities and Exchange Commission, Agricultural Adjustment Administration, and the National Recovery Administration, the last two meeting opposition and being the ones ruled unconstitutional. After winning in the election of 1833, Roosevelt was extremely influential as he gave hope to the American public, specifically within the first 100 days. Through his policies in the first and later the second New Deal, the three R's, Relief, Recovery, Reform, and the so-called alphabet soup of acts he passed, he continuously aimed to better American lives. The president was more than capable to connect with his country through a huge form of mass media, the radio. With his fireside chats, he could calm the nation and reassure their thoughts of getting out of the hardships they were enduring through the Great Depression. Hello, America. Um, it's your president, FDR, here um, in the session of my uh, fireside chats. Today I'd like to be discussing about the um, grim times that our country is facing right now. I know it might be difficult, but persevere. Remember, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Keep your hats up. Adios, America. My wife, she's a powerhouse. On a few occasions, she even publicly disagreed with some of my policies. I hate when she does that. But honestly, she's my other half. I couldn't have done any of this without her by my side. She kept the people happy, you know? She went down to the unemployed minors. She advocated for the women, even civil rights. And she gave me the idea to establish welfare states, helping millions. She is such a kind soul. Many unions benefited from Roosevelt's New Deal Act, especially due to his administration being more pro-union. Some of the most effective for unions were the Wagner Act, which allowed for the right to join unions in the first place, more job opportunities through the Works Progress Administration and Civil Works Administration, 
While before, many felt oppressed and they had no rights because of the poor treatment, pay, and conditions, more would feel better because of the New Deal. A lot of factors contributed to the Dust Bowl that devastated farmers and even caused a large portion of them to migrate to California in search of farms or work. Some of the causes of the Dust Bowl are overgrazing, improper farming, a drought in 1934, and high winds. Although it did bring upon many negative things, it also brought some positives. The Soil Conservation Service in 1935 was created to prevent another Dust Bowl by teaching plains farmers to rotate crops, terrace fields, and contour plowing. As a liberal, hi. As a liberal, I thought the New Deal did way too much for big businesses and not enough for the people. So when the second New Deal came out, I was ecstatic as it united the people in unions or allowed them to unite. As a conservative, I was very disappointed to see our governments dip their little toes into our lives. It was outrageous. It almost even looked like communism. It was, it was wild. And America's a land of free, and I don't appreciate some guy limiting our freedoms, because that's outrageous. Two. FDR was what America needed in the Great Depression. He was charismatic, and he gave the people hope with his fireside chats in this time of need. He went in, and he did something. He created a change in the government. He brought the government into people's lives, giving government jobs, and he made the three R's. Relief, recovery, and reform. Ugh. Relief and recovery was mostly in his first New Deal. Relief was in the form of giving new jobs, while recovery was in the form of helping businesses. While the second New Deal was mostly reform, giving power to the unions, making them stronger. America was great around this time, and my company had a big role in this. I perfected the assembly line, making manufacturing way more efficient, and with our good conditions, good work conditions, America had free time that they never had before. Prior to World War II and the tragedy of Pearl Harbor, almost all Americans did not want to go to war. They wanted to maintain their isolationist policies and follow in the footsteps of Washington's farewell address and, Mon and the Monroe Doctrine. But not even when FDR tested the waters with the quarantine speech did they still want to go. They all wanted to maintain their isolationist views. But after Pearl Harbor, everything was different. Almost everybody, no, everybody wanted to go to war to talk about our involvement in our recent World War I, which was a total waste. Why would we go to war for something we weren't even involved in? Why is this war and done? And gun people. Yeah, no. but that what doesn't do anything for us. Right, what has this war done for us? What our men came back, no jobs, no house. Our country was trashed for a period of time. They did nothing for us. It was no good. And as for World War II, it's not even happening. Let's just focus on our country and our country alone. Let's focus on making America great again. America Let's, first. Right, 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 right. Let's do this right. Our way, the only way. Let's not get involved in their business again, because the last time we did, it wasn't even good. We did nothing for our country. It was no good. I agree. That's correct, man. Good, good. Motion passed. It's Motion good. passed. It's a good job, gentlemen. As Roosevelt was still attempting to be neutral in the rest of the world's raging war, but somehow remained connected to some nations, the isolationist country established the America First Committee. As self-explanatory as the group is, they believed the nation to remain separate from the chaos in the surrounding countries and continue to mend their own home and not waste any time, money, or materials on another war that didn't concern them, much like the beliefs of the Nine Committee. The neutrality acts that Roosevelt reluctantly accepted from 1936 to 1938 were mainly for the people, as many were worried that he would be dragging the country into the war. The country became aware of Roosevelt's aiding Britain in their mobilization and war effort. Because of the general public being so upset with this, the president told his country that it is their duty to help their struggling countries maintain their freedoms. His poor freedom speech justified his actions by stating that there were the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom from want, and freedom from fear that should be protected for the other nations. After World War I, America felt that its involvement was a complete waste. They came back waste. They came back, the Great Migration happened, their jobs were gone, the farmers were poorer than ever. And so they went back to how things were. They isolated themselves. And this time, it was great. 
The feelings after World War I deeply affected America's involvement in World War II. They put in place things such as the good neighbor policies to really show that they're trying to stay out of everyone's visits and focus on themselves. Even when the open door policy was closed by Japan, they put in the Stimson Doctrine to say that they really don't acknowledge that it even happened. But even when they, the world were crumbling around them and the president was realizing that America could no longer stay out of the war, so they put in things such as neutrality acts to keep America helping everyone, well, Britain, really, and staying out of it at the same time. But when Franklin Roosevelt went into the Atlantic Charter with Britain, this sparked up a lot of negative feelings from America. On December 7, 1941, Japan changed the game for the United States. An attack on the naval base in Hawaii devastated the country as Japanese Air Force destroyed the entire fleet and took many innocent lives. Many dangerous weapons killed and injured Americans and many couldn't receive medical attention due to the mass amount of lives the Japanese were taking. Eight battleships, three cruisers, four other vessels, 188 airplanes, over 2,300 deaths, and over 3,400 casualties were taken and lost. What the Japanese did to America would never be forgotten as the brutality shown would be the determining factor in bringing the nation into the world war. The Japanese thought that it would prevent the U.S. from wanting to join the war effort, and they were severely wrong, as it would only lead to a surge of U.S. pride, and they started to become a world power. Now, kids, what are these? Detonators! What shouldn't we step on? Detonators! And what's this? A gun! Who made these? Rosie the Riveter! And who do we want to be like? Rosie the Riveter! Why do we want to be Rosie? Because they have power women! But not too much power as it intimidates men of our country. Darcy blows. <laughs> and we're good. Just like that. See, we just like whip it out. Here, I'll put that back. We whip it out? Yeah. We'll pop it even the minority classes, like the Mexicans and African Americans, were heavily involved, and although women were already in the workforce, many more would leave their homes for the day in order to take on more roles in American society, as they became the backbone of the United States industrial increase for contributing in any possible way for the war effort. A huge icon for American women in the workforce was Rosie the Riveter. She showed that they were strong and capable while still being able to look like a woman. Here you go. The attacks in Pearl Harbor completely changed American attitude towards war. And before, isolations were very strict on their policies, but now the country mass mobilized towards the war effort to put everything we had into it. Especially, um, women weren't the only minorities. Okay, okay. Women, women was the, women weren't the only minorities that saw economic opportunities in this uh, wartime economic boom. For example, the uh, Mexicans that were deported were brought back because we needed farmers and in the, in the Braceras program. And also, the African Americans saw a lot of economic opportunities at this time. They could manage now, and this also correlates with the whole uh, double V campaign. Uh, it was like campaigning victory in Europe against uh, the Axis powers and their evils and also victory at home against racism and discrimination. But yeah. Is that it? Yeah. My family was part of the Japanese internment act. Honestly, it just devastated us. We lost everything that we had worked up up to that point. Everything. And we were put in, these, in this place with machine guns pointed at us all the time, like if we were some sort of criminals. But no. We're American citizens just like anyone else. But why us? Just because we were Japanese. The Tehran, Yalta, and Potsdam conferences between the U.S., Britain, and Italy really showed how much America had changed throughout the war. They were now working alongside other countries to get things done, which was a big step from refusing to enter similar setups, like the League of Nations. If there are any positive effects of Pearl Harbor, it would be that it turned America into a superpower. Unemployment was at 0%, and it brought the nation out of the Great Depression. Production was booming as the country prepared for total war. The War Productions Board took charge of this. They also led to the creation of the Office of War Mobilization and the Office of Price Administration.